Hey everybody, it's me in Travel Forge. So I've been talking about milk kefir. That's just paint. It's on the outside, I promise. Talking about milk kefir on Facebook and Instagram. Fairly new to us, but it's like such a simple process. Um, I figured it was time to share it with you because it's really something that everybody can do. So every time I heard kefir grains, I'm like, what the heck does that even mean? Basically, it looks like cottage cheese kind of it's just kind of like little clumps um so my friend brandy who i met near where we live now she dropped off a little jar for me one day um and i just kept it going every two or three days i'll strain off these kefir jars um you can do it every day you can do it every other day every three days it really just depends on how tangy you want it to be so if you're familiar with making yogurt when you make yogurt you know if you do it for six hours in your incubator, which would be like an instant pot or crock pot or a cooler or whatever you use, it's not gonna be as tangy <clears throat> as if you do it for 10 or 12 hours. Same kind of concept with this. So basically, um, Mary's Nest calls this the champagne of milk, and I would agree, it is delicious. Um, and it's, it's just like any other fermented dairy. Um, so we use raw dairy, and we're getting all the probiotics when we ferment it. So it's just kind of keeping your gut health in check. It's delicious. You can flavor it with all kinds of things. So I'm going to show you how to strain it off and how to get started. All right. So don't mind Zuzu's foot. Zuzu is very sad because I don't know. She touched an onion or something. Okay. So we have our two jars here. So what I did was I put my kefir grains in the bottom and then i filled this with raw milk um you don't have to use raw that's just what we prefer so i filled this with raw milk and i covered it with a coffee filter and a rubber band and it sat on the counter for like a little over two days so now i have my strainer i'm going to pour this into here so that my kefir grains stay in the top and i can start this process over and then this will be the milk kefir that we're going to drink okay so we're just gonna pour this in. This is gonna be like pretty thick, almost kind of yogurt-ish, um, just because I've had, we like it a little tangier, so I've had it sitting here for a few days. But you can sort of see where, like I'm talking about the grain. So in here, you can sort of see like the little bubbles. Um, again, kind of cottage cheese-ish. it, cottage cheese -ish. And then, you know, the liquid part is what we're gonna drink. All right, so the thickest part is usually on the bottom. So you can see sort of where those little pieces are that I'm talking about. That's really what we want for our next batch, but it doesn't matter. If you get some of the liquid into your next batch, it doesn't matter. It's just gonna be more starter. So we have a nice little strainer full here. It's dripping, but nice little strainer full here of the grains. I'm just gonna put them into my clean jar and this will be our starter for the next batch. All right, so we got three quart jars here. I have about equal-ish kefir grains in the bottom of them. This is my jar of kefir to drink. So I wanted to show you too that you can flavor these really easily. You can flavor them really easily. So we use freeze-dried fruit powders a lot. Um, so I'm gonna get a few of those. I'll show you those. You could also flavor it with like honey or maple syrup. You could not flavor it at all, whatever. Suits all right, so here I have cranberry powder and I have strawberry powder. Um, this strawberry powder, just to note, was made from only strawberry tops. Um, so there was no waste when we made this. So for a quart, you could take maybe like a tablespoon. It's really just up to your preference and what you like. I'll probably split this into two pints so that dad has one and I have one um, and just maybe put like a spoonful-ish or something in it just to flavor it, you know, put it in the jar, put the lid on, shake it really well, and it is really delicious. So I'm gonna show you how to finish this process. Right, so this can be kind of messy, or you know, if you know me, it's probably just me. But we get raw A2A2 grass-fed 
milk from a farm down the road. It's been excellent. We pay $5 for the gallon. It's just the coolest little place. You just drop in, get your milk, leave your money and roll out. We love it. It's the best. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to top these jars off with the milk. I usually don't fill them the whole way, usually like up to the neck. And then these are just going to sit here for, like I said, one to two, three days. Really just depends on your taste preference. Um, and like a warm earth spot. I mean, they're in our kitchen. Our air conditioning's on. Our house is probably 68-ish. But this time of year, the stove is usually also running, so it's probably warmer in here um, than what the thermostat actually says. So you're just gonna let them sit there and then do the straining process and you just start over. Um, and it's just like yogurt. You know, you have your starter that goes on and on forever. Um, being able to do fermented dairy when you don't have a big garden, as I've mentioned, we don't have our big garden this year. So during the month of August, while I'm trying to do the every bit counts challenge, being able to do fermented dairy is really great because it kind of helps you fill in the gaps. I'm not bringing in bushels of peppers and tomatoes and all those other things that I typically would be bringing in. Um, you know, like last year we had our 2000 square foot garden. It's in pieces in the backyard because we haven't put it back together yet. Um, probably for next year, but this is an awesome way to preserve dairy. Um, and you just, you know, like I said, keep your keeper greens going. You preserve them as long as you want. Um, so if you have any questions about this, how this works, why it might benefit you, let me know. We'll see you next time.